And <clears throat> I know now you're in charge of the, you're the chief of staff of the Irish Defence Forces, so you're in charge of the whole army. But before 2015, for a few years, you worked as a flag officer yes. on the naval base. And here we're standing on the top point of the naval base, overlooking the beautiful Cork Harbour. And I was just curious, could you elaborate maybe on what are the main day-to-day -day duties of a flag officer? Yeah, in, in, well, in the naval service is basically delivering the maritime element of defences in keeping with government policy. And that would be, first of all, the actual uh, capacity to meet the defence, the, the security, and the government service requirements in the maritime domain primarily. And that, you know, re really boils down to uh, developing a strategy that actually matches the policy of government. In, in, in real terms, that translates back into looking at the people in your organization, ensuring that they're properly developed and they're married with that key enabler, which is the ship, and that they can do so in a manner whereby their training uh, ensures that they are able to maximize the outputs of that ship in terms of defense or a security or a government service side. Critically important, however, is creating that environment of an esprit de corps where people are valued where they have a sense of camaraderie, where the actual organization itself offers, offers as an opportunity for people to develop in the organization itself. And we do that, and, and Naval Service personnel are highly sought after at a time where we have a buoyant uh, economy. Uh, I see again and again where uh, highly developed skills uh, are going to other parts of the private and public sector. And it's at times it can be a frustration in the investment, but you know, at the same time, I see these skills being reinvested back into civil society, whether it be into the enterprise or other parts of the public sector. And it's part of the cycle of a, an organization is trying to manage that balance that your, your premature voluntary retirements, as I call them, they're not leaving too early. Uh, and at times I, I have to advocate in terms of ensuring that conditions are right within the Naval Service so that we actually can make it incentivize retention measures. And right now I'm in that space at the moment, advocating in terms of uh, improving the incentives to stay in the organization, improving so the incentives. Keep the expertise in-house. Keep the expertise in-house uh, so that we, we, we individuals feel that there is a career for them in the Naval Service itself. And likewise in terms of ensuring that we are attractive to new entrants in terms of competing with other parts of the market from the point of view of a career in the Defence Forces. And, and that just doesn't apply to the Naval Service, it applies to the Army and applies to the Air Corps. One thing I would say, I will never apologize for advocating for the men and women of the Defence Forces, whether they be in the Air Corps or whether they be in the Army or whether they be in the Naval Service. That's my job. It's my job in terms of a leader to create the conditions that are um, optimized to ensure that we have a healthy organization where people, people feel valued, where risk is managed properly and we deliver a level of service that is uh, appropriate to the demands of government, whether it be in the defence uh, security are in the government support services. Mm -hmm. And Mark, what would be the current challenges that are facing the Irish Naval Service? I think there, there, it's, it's currently known that we, we are having challenges in terms of the retention of our personnel at present. It's such an attractive market outside, a buoyant economy that is actually uh, leveraging on the highly skilled uh, individuals. And you know, not only are we, we're, we're, we're having a double tap here because I was just talking to the flag officer this morning, you know, we are losing good people to um, very lucrative uh, employment, in particular around this area here where you have a lot of the pharma, which would be tech heavy. You have a lot of um, industries uh, that would be after the types of skills we have. And that, that, that is a big challenge. And I suppose the other challenge I see is often when we try and uh, recruit, uh, and in particular when we try and take, let's say, direct entry skill levels, we've seen again and again, as soon as we actually make the offer, the employer actually ups his offer to retain the individual and that's the freedom that I don't have in the context of being able to compete with that. So um, we're, we're looking at ways in which we can first of all improve our offering in terms of recruitment but the critical piece is to actually try and husband and value those who are serving in the organisation, make it attractive for them to stay in the organisation and in particular make it attractive for them to go to sea. Going to sea is a challenging, uh, I suppose, job at the best of times and I'm very conscious in terms of people who serve in the Defence Forces, no matter what service is, they serve there with the support base of their families. So we have to be conscious increasingly of the societal and the domestic pressures that individuals, whether they're man or woman, feel in the context of their service to Defence Forces and I keep on now looking beyond the individual and, and looking at his support base and that's an area we're trying to develop is 
our, our support services to families because it is they who often are the silent partner in the context of the service provision to the state. And the loyalty of the soldier, the sailor or the air crew member is critical. But I, I actually want to acknowledge the loyalty of families who often make sacrifices when their, their husband or their wife or their daughter um, or their mother is actually, uh, or their father is overseas or actually at sea or separated for extended periods because they're serving their state so loyally and keeping with our values.